creators, it's your boy, Mad Mike. And on today's episode, we're gonna be crawling underneath the 1974 Plymouth Cuda project car, and we're gonna be grinding off all the surface rust and removing all the undercoat, getting ready to repair the frame rails. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned and check it out. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Ha, dare to be you. This world is just a canvas to our imagination. Turn a figment of your mind into creation. Alrighty then. If you guys are new to the channel, this is my 1974 Plymouth Barracuda that I'm gonna be transforming into a Cuda AAR tribute car. I picked this car up in Northern Ontario and when me and my girlfriend got it, it was literally just the shell. No doors, no trunk, no hood, no front end, no K member, nothing. So we've come a long way since then and it's starting to take shape. Right now we're just in the mock-up stage where we're kind of mounting doors, kind of getting some ideas for some different hood scoops, uh, figuring out what front end we're gonna run, whether it's gonna be this fiberglass flip front end or we're gonna put the steel front end on, not too sure. We're gonna have to do some quarter panel repair. We're mocking up the interior. In the last vlog, we installed all the interior and the gauges are now in as well. I just got to install all the gauge bezels, which I do have. We have steering wheel, which works, which is pretty wicked. And uh, yeah, we've come a long way with the CUDA project over here. I'll just show you guys right now. I do have from the gentleman that I picked the car up off of, Ward, he's such a nice guy. He hooked me up with these kind of uh, gauge cluster bezel areas. So that houses the gauges. And then I got my headlight switch over here. Doot, doot. So that'll fill up the whole console area on the dash. But yeah, on today's episode, we're gonna be crawling underneath the car. We're gonna be grinding down the entire underside of the body and getting rid of all the undercoat and revealing actually how much damage is done to the frame rails. The majority of the rust is on the driver's side, lowers, because I guess that car was sitting just out in the field or something and that's where they rotted out. So we're gonna crawl underneath there, get rid of all that rust. I picked up a bunch of new things, Let's just dump this out. We're up here in Canada and we have Princess Auto. They have awesome stuff. So anyways, picked myself up a nice little body saw finally. These things are amazing. This was only 49 bucks, so that's a score. And we got a bunch of different grinding wheels, sanding wheel discs for uh, drills or angle grinders. Some new safety glasses, because these wire wheels will fly off and stab you right in the eye. Some big wire wheels for our grinder. Uh, and we got some scrapers, that should help too. And we got a bunch of other tools to get underneath there, start scraping the underside. I'm pretty excited about today's episode. I've been wanting to get underneath the car and get rid of all the surface rust for a really long time to reveal just how much damage is done to the frame rails. It's not a big deal repairing the frame rails on these cars. It's just really tedious and you almost end up doing more damage to other panels in the car that don't need to be repaired. For example, if you're taking out the rear frame rails, you're gonna have to drill out all the spot welds and the trunk pan, uh, the floor pan behind the seats, and you're just gonna have to get your air chisel in there and just make a mess of all the other parts that don't need to be fixed. So in my case, I'm hoping I can just patch panel or do some frame caps or the other option is to see how bad it is and decide whether or not we want to go ahead and build an entire custom chassis for the CUDA. It's not a big deal, we do it at work. My coworker Dave has really inspired me just to step outside of my comfort zone and build a chassis for this car. And I would love to do that because we could just throw the drivetrain, wheels, uh, do like a four link suspension and basically mount the body to the chassis, which would be great. But at the same time, that's a lot of work, a lot of money, a lot of engineering. And if the frame rails are just kind of rotted out on the driver's side and they can be repaired on the CUDA, I think I'm just gonna go that route because I just wanna get this car done, get it rolling, get it driving, and put that massive 440 big block that we got out of a motorhome into the car. So, let's stop talking. La -da -dee, la -da -da. back end is over here so let's start with the front end so the frame rail on the passenger side is actually in great condition obviously there's some scaling and surface rust but the shock tower and everything like that is in good shape uh, there's no cracks no bends all the way underneath here as well you can see the pinch welds are still good everything is nice and sealed up right into the cross member 
This looks all good. There's no rot from stabbing with the screwdriver and whatnot. We'll get a better idea of even how good this really is once we start grinding it all down. So this is the passenger side, front frame rail, which is in good shape. You can see where the torsion bar goes into. Everything's in really, really good shape. Just a bunch of undercoating and whatnot. And then if we pan over here to the driver side, you can see how the cross member is again completely rotted out. So the good thing is, it's just from here over. So we could cut all this out and do kind of a, a cap on here like we could on the rear, or you could replace the whole cross member. But again, you're gonna be having to drill out all of these spot welds into the floor and just making a mess of other panels that don't need to be replaced. So we might go ahead and cap this as well. Again, today I'm kind of assessing everything to see whether or not we wanna repair stuff or whether we wanna build a custom frame. Comment below what you guys think. All right, so you've seen the underside of the car. Nothing too pretty underneath there. I got a lot of grinding to do to really reveal the extents of the damage. Um, what I think I'm gonna do now is we're gonna drop the rear end in the car. We're gonna get rid of the leaf springs, get rid of the rear end because it's not even made for this car. This is uh, like I think a seven and a quarter rear end out of a, an A body, I believe Dart or Valiant or whatnot. So we'll get rid of the leaf springs, get rid of the rear end. That way I can get access to the frame rails and the underside a lot better. Let's find out where I can put these jack stands in a nice safe spot because I'll be crawling underneath there all day and I don't want this car to fall down on me. Let's do that first, let's get after it. able to remove the jack stands which by the way these jack stands are freaking amazing I picked these up off the guy that I got the hood scoop from and they're sand filled I've never heard or seen these before but basically you're able to pull them up and then the sand will fill up below them and the weight will just crush the sand down so you can move them up in like millimeters and get some pretty precise uh, leveling with these jack stands the only downside to these is to get them to go back down, you have to pull them out, tip them upside down, kind of like a, one of those sand filled hourglass things, and then it'll go back down. But these are super sturdy and great for adjustability. Never heard of them, but I'm loving them. So I got them underneath kind of the rear shock mount area where the leaf spring would uh, bolt up to. So hopefully that's gonna be strong enough. Let's go ahead, drop the jack down, and then we should be able to remove the rear end and the leaf springs. Like I was saying, the leaf springs on this aren't really bolted in. They're just kind of hanging up in there, so I'll undo the shocks, and then I should be able to lower this down and wiggle the whole rear end completely out. Oakley. So we finally were able to drop the rear end with the leaf springs. Let's go ahead and awkwardly try to drag it out of the shop, get it out of the way. There you have it. Just trying to get the shocks off the back of the Cuda. So I got Rosie helping out. Got the air drill on there. We're gonna prep, prep, hammer off, get the shocks off. Got one side done, so once you're on there, bro, just let me know. We'll hammer away. Yeah, this one's higher. You need a deeper socket? Well, no, the other one I pushed it in was like here. Yeah. This is like this almost. Oh. It'll still work. Yeah. Yeah, it'll work. Come on there. 10 4, I'll just get underneath. Yeah, yeah whenever you're ready. Thank you. 
We've got the brake line inside here, so we're going to try to remove the brake line so we can finish cleaning off the passenger side rear frame rail. Zip, zip. I'll give you guys a bit of a comparison from the driver's side compared to the passenger side and show you just how well these frame rails are cleaning up. Sure, there's some chunky areas with rust, but I'll just be cutting those out and patching those in or potentially rebuilding the whole frame rail. So you can see right there on the lower driver's side frame rail, it's all rotted out. So I might get a leaf springer relocation kit or just box it in with some new tubing and sheet metal and brace it all in. But if you look up here, you guys can see just all that undercoat and surface rot. It looks horrible, right? But would you be surprised that underneath that is body color? You can kind of see it there. You kind of see the metallic poking itself through. So what I thought was all rust and rot is actually just undercoat. Let's go over to the passenger side now and I'll show you what it looks like just quickly cleaned up with the wire wheel. Going over to the passenger side rear frame rail and bam, I haven't done the wheel well yet just cause I'm focusing on the frame rails. And the other thing I noticed was when I took off the wheel, I noticed PH engraved and then MM inside the wheel well. Don't know what that means. This used to be an old drag car. Maybe I could find some history on why the guy did that. Or if anybody in the comments could tell me why he might have done that. Kind of interesting though. But here is the frame rails on the passenger side. So you can see with all the undercoat and surface rust removed with the wire wheel, we got body collar and fresh steel. Now I can really tell the condition of the frame rail just by examining it and tapping it with screwdrivers, trying to pick your way through, find the weak spots, what you might need to patch and what you uh, can leave. This whole lower shock mount area is all solid. Welds are good, spot welds are good, gaps are good. <laughs> Keep it nice and safe with these new glasses that cover my whole face, especially when using the wire wheel. Got my respirator on and just got my paint suit on. That way I don't get rust all over me. Well, let's keep on grinding. <laughs> So there's it with the undercoat. And once you scrape off the undercoat, you reveal the body color, as well as some surface rust and whatever other hidden rust is underneath all that undercoat. But so far it's looking pretty good up here. Well that is exhausting work. A lot of rust falling down to your eyeballs. Check out that amount of rust. A lot of it's undercoating as well too, because I started doing the uh, wheel well as well. And you can see underneath all that undercoat is raw steel. So you can tell that you got some good steel or bad steel and uh, the body color again, so that's pretty cool. The frame rail on the driver's side is coming out real good. It's looking real nice pretty much for the whole swoop part. But again, the lower part where it has the leaf spring mount bracket, that's all got to be replaced as well as the rear part, same as on the passenger side. But it's coming together, it's looking pretty good. I'm starting to assess what I need to do now, whether I'm going to go ahead and just patch up the frame rails, cap them, or if I'm gonna cut them out and replace them. Third option was to build a complete custom frame if all the frame rails were just too far gone, but I think that they're gonna be repairable. <laughs> well guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys next time. Ciao, ciao. Woo!